The story of John J. Flaherty. A warning to you, my friends. A warning to you. Tick tock. Tick tock. Your time is ticking. Thankfully, we can look in the future, look in the past, and kind of put our feet in the shoes of this guy that we're going to talk about and, uh, you know, what he did not know. It's actually, I think it's sad. All right, so let's go into this. So first and foremost, I love David Hoffman's videos. If you're not following David Hoffman, you're just wrong. Um, David has a lot of ties to Maine, and I'm sure that's what got me hooked on him. He lives in California now, but just a good guy. Uh, he was a videographer from way, way back in the past, when I think the 70s, 80s, 90s, maybe even the 60s. I think the 60s. I came across one of his videos when he did a, 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 a video on bluegrass in Appalachia. It was fantastic. And I said, holy crap, he has a lot of uh, ties to Maine. He interviewed some metal kids in uh, the early, in the mid 80s in Maine. And uh, later, like he just interviewed them again, like a couple, uh, I don't even think that long, but a couple of years ago at most. Incredible. He's a good guy. I mean, I, I, he's a good guy. He's an old school liberal the way they should be, frankly. And, uh, and I like David. Anyway, so uh, he he puts out a lot of videos. And he put this one out just today, as a matter of fact. And uh, as wa some of the worst TV ads ever made. Try not to laugh. And I was watching it. And I started watching this one right here. And I'm not going to play it because I don't, I'm don't. i not sure if David would trade, you know, trademark me or whatever it's called. And I, I don't know. But I'm not going to. But anyway, subscribe to his channel. Watch these videos. It's, it just is phenomenal. If you like stepping back in the past, this guy's your man. Anyway, I just got it. So this is, uh, so David said, he, you know, he was doing uh, much of his adult life. He spent in a small town of Camden, Maine, building a videography business, doing commercials and stuff. And one day he left his VCR on, and these are some of the the, um, the commercials that came up from the 60s, he said. Or I'm not sure how he got this. But anyway, these are from 1961 in Bangor, Maine. And I started watching this and said, who is, what happened to this guy? You know what I'm saying? What happened to him? And it says he's, pre he's John J. Flaherty, president of Beacon Finance in Bangor, Maine. He says he gives us an example of basically refinancing your debt into one small loan. I said, man, it's like Capital One. It's like it's crazy. Just refinance. And, and he actually it's, it's just nuts. It was, I was like, holy crap, heard that before. So I started looking up John J. Flaherty. And I went to the, uh, um, the Penobscot County Register of Deeds. And he was part of Beacon, he owned, I guess he was owned of Beacon Finance. So I started looking up all this stuff, Beacon Finance, Beacon Finance. I came across this one, actually, it's pretty interesting. He had a foreclosure on Miss Hazel C. W. Clark. Hazel W. Clark. And I said, and I did. So I, the whole, I just, I love this stuff. I don't know why. It's weird. I get it. So I, I looked at, and so I started looking up Hazel Clark, and I came across this one. It was pretty interesting. And here, this is the mortgage that uh, she ended up foreclosing on or had on foreclosing. Hazel B, which is weird because later on it says Hazel W. It was the same lady, so I'm not sure why it's Hazel B and Hazel W. Now, Hazel is a widow herself, as you'll see down here. Um, Hazel B. Clark, uh, I guess this one does say the widow, but other ones that did. Yeah, right here. Hazel B. Clark, widow and unmarried. So, I, you know, I didn't really do the research why Hazel B. Clark was a widow. Maybe the war, I don't know. But... Um, it's interesting, nonetheless, because here's a real person who's going foreclosed, who's a widow. It just uh, it kills me. And and basically, Beacon Finance lent her the money in 1964 is what this one was. You see mortgage deed. You're going to see mortgage uh, someplace in there. I can't remember. But anyways, for Hazel, 1964. Did I go? Yeah, here he is. Right here. Uh, let's keep going back. I See, I love this stuff. I, I just, here's, I saw Hazel right there. There's a mortgage to Hazel. Right there, Hazel Clark in 1966, excuse me. And then she gets foreclosed on, hold on a second. She gets foreclosed on in 1960, right there. 19, where was it? Right there, 1968. So two years later. The interesting thing was how did Hazel Clark get uh, affiliated with Beacon Financial to begin with? What I'm going to show you is, it says, it's, I, look, I tell you, man, it's right there. So she, uh, she took out a, basically, a, I, what I think was it, well, let's just take a look here. I'm going to show you. It's a car mortgage. Where she took out what I thought was a non-secure loan, it looks like here. All right, so I guess we're not going to find that there. So I got to go back. Um, it looked like a non-secure loan, and then she, uh, and then it looks like she bought a, a, a more. she did a mortgage too. So let's just, hold on, this is going to come back. Just hang in there. So we're going to see mortgages, 1964. Um, 
Yeah, right here. This is, so she took this out. This is an unsecured loan, I think. Anyway, so the point being, as you can see down here, she took out, she borrowed $1,367. All right. Um, this is not unsecured. This is secured by a piece of property. And they even have the terms on here. $1,367. Uh, she's paying 3% interest a month on the part uh, that's basically 3% on the first 150, 2.5% on any unpaid balance in excess of 150 but not seating uh, 300, one half percent. So you can see how they're doing this. Anyway, long story short, she's paying $53 a month uh, for 36 months. I just took my trusted calculator. She's basically paying 28% interest back then. And it looks like she had her dad and mom as a co-signer, which is weird because her dad and mom didn't even co-sign. There's no sign signature of dad and mom because it says right here, according to the tenure of one certain promissory note uh, hereby given by said Hazel B, Reginald G R. Clark, and Elizabeth Clark to said Beacon Finance where they promised to pay the paid sum, and yet you only see Hazel's name on there. So I'm not sure what she, I don't know how that worked because they didn't sign. Isn't that interesting? Anyway, so you can see they foreclosed later. Um, if we go down here in 1960, uh, right here, uh, where was it? Beacon Financial. That's on Hazel right there, and I'm not going to show it to you. But uh, all right, so who did, so uh, let's just take a look. Who was doing all this stuff? I mean, who was part of all this? I mean, there was this guy. Um, John J. Flaher Flaherty. I just wonder if I can show you the foreclosure thing. And it's interesting because they actually had to put a bullet in, in the paper, the, Mang the Bangor paper. So let's see if we can. I don't think that's the same one. What is this right here? Let's see what this foreclosure was. They had to pull a bullet in the, in the Bangor paper saying that they're foreclosing on Miss Hazel. Again, a widow. And I'm, look, you only got to pay your bills, man. I'm not, I'm not saying it's just because she's a widow. She shouldn't have had to pay it. But it was signed by... I guess he didn't sign it. This is the uh, the manager right there. But anyway, point being is incredibly interesting stuff for this guy. So he so this guy right here, he owned Beacon Financial. All right, he actually ran uh, for city council and won. He was actually mayor of Bangor at one point. Interesting. Very active in the community. Very active. He's part of the Navy. Um, the I, some kind of group for the Navy. Um, his wife was a teacher. Very, very active in the community. All right, so then what happened is, check this out. One more second. All right, so this is a 1973, and he uh, old merchant's bank building, bought by who? By John J. Flaherty, who was president of Colonial Industrial Bank of Bangor. So merchant's bank building sold. The merchant's bank to, was sold for $125,000 to John Flaherty, who was the president of Colonial Industrial Bank. It said the bank would move into Broad Street building along with other businesses. Anyway. And this is interesting, too. So this is in 1973. So hang tight because the tragedy is going to hit. Uh, Merle Bowden, vice president of something. I'm not sure what firm that is. He said who handled it, probably a law firm. He handled the sale. He disclosed that the Flaherty, uh, Flaherty, uh, let's see, uh, that Flaherty might plan to locate the local TV station in the building. But Flaherty said after examining the possibilities, he probably would not. Um, Let's see. It's interesting, too, because Flaherty, one second, uh, Flaher, right here, Flaherty was associated with a local TV station, a sales manager following a managerial shakeup earlier this year. But Thursday, he said he has no financial interest in the station, as merely with Channel 7 have no comment. Um, anyway, he said, if there are... Are you, uh, is there a speculation they might buy the, the television station? He goes, if there's a possibility of buying Channel 7, I sure I'd be interested, but it's remote. Anyway, so I don't know what's going That's interesting. So he buys his bank. He is the, uh, he, he, he's also the, to him specifically, he's also the president of Colonial Industrial Bank. And that same year, he was running around as a sales manager for the local TV station. So I'm not sure what happened to uh, Beacon Finance because this right here, was Beacon Finance, and we see all kinds of advertisements for Beacon Finance in the uh, the Bangor paper from 1958 to about 1966. And then it stops. It's weird, actually. It's very, very interesting. So let me show you. All right. So let's go to. Uh, oh, oh, hold on a second. Oh, oh, oh. I'm giving away the store. So we're gonna go to Beacon Finance. So let's just go back. We're gonna pop. We're gonna just type in Beacon. Does it keep us in Bangor, Maine? It might. I right, pause it. I go here and type in Beacon Finance.
I'm just going to type in Beacon Finance. We're going to do Bangor, Maine. And then we're going to hit that right there. Finney. And so here's 1955. Watch this. Beacon Finance. Um, you'll see an ad. <clears throat> Get cash plus. Beacon Finance give you cash plus. Extra foods, extra fast. So that's Beacon Finance. Alton Rose manager, but Flaherty. So let's keep going back. to This is crazy, man. Just again, it's like stepping back in time. Uh, let's go to 19, uh, let's not go to 19, right here, 1965. All right, so uh, we're stepping back in time right here. Henry Lawler and John Flaherty, president. We have helped hundreds of families cut monthly payments to one low payment. Does that sound familiar? When we help, when we help you, you don't have to be a homeowner. We're going to take all your debt, 2100 bucks that you're paying 240 bucks a month on, and we're going to pay you 77 bucks. That's great. It's just free money. Um, all right, so so all that's happening, and then it just kind of wanes. It just goes away. It's weird. I couldn't really find much. I had spent all that much time, but I couldn't really find much. Let's go to more filters. Uh, let's uh, sort by date. Let's go to newest. And you're going to see... So basically, we have a couple um, Beacon Finance. They just you know drop more. It's actually kind of interesting. Some of the stuff that I'm not gonna. But look, from 1968, 1970, and that's it to 1979. So we're gonna look at 1970, and Flaherty isn't even on this. It's just this other guy uh, right here. Okay, one D at Belfast. So uh, Beacon Finance was represented by Stanley Brown, which is interesting. Um, and then there's some other documents, and it's just it's just interesting. But that's not the tragic story. The tragic story is, remember, so 1973, a Colonial Industrial Bank, he bought that big old uh, merchant, uh, John Flaherty bought that big old piece of property at Merchant's Bank. Now check this out. It turns out his wife dies less than two, two years later. She died June 7th of, two, of 1975 at a Boston hospital. She taught at Jordan High School in Lewiston, a Bangor High School. She's a member of something. She's a, Catholic, uh, she's a member of St. Catholic Church. She was on the Governor's uh, Education Committee, and she's survived by her husband, one son and one daughter. Now, why, how did she die? We don't know. So we're going to go down here. We're just going to say, so I just typed in, you know, her name is Ma Margaret Hines Flaherty. Oh, boy. So I don't see um, actually what happened, but she died in Boston, which tells me she must have some kind of cancer or something like that because uh you go all the way down there that's a that's a that's a challenge yeah and here's he's uh so I, that's it that's all i see there's no like formal obituary or anything like that um which is sad anyway so uh yeah i don't see anything else here um we already read that one all right so uh so what will so then i was like man so so he you know he was making all all these uh headways in 1973, as president of the Colonial Industrial Bank, and then uh, a year and a half later, his wife dies. All right, so check this out. Here he dies. And June 1st, 1979, just four years, yeah, four years after his wife. He's only, oh, that's not the right guy. Hold on a second. Wrong guy. This guy right here, John Flaherty. He died March 30th, 1979, unexpectedly at 68 years old. 68. Unexpectedly at a local hospital. Ah, he attended Lewiston schools. And I probably met his wife there. Uh, upon graduation, began district manager of uh, some place in New York, he returned to Maine in 1942, became vice president of general manager of something, uh, something else. He later founded and became president of Beacon Finance, company of Bangor, and subsequently became president and chairman of the board of Colonial Industrial Bank. He was a member of Bangor City Council and later as mayor. He also served as a member of Bangor Water District and later as the chairman. He was active in many local and state groups. After uh, after his retirement in 1976, so what do you think happened in 1975 to make him consider retiring? Well, his wife died. He remained active as a financial consultant and was recently named, named state chairman for Benjamin Fernandez for president. I don't know who that, what that is, but he uh, survived by one son in Massachusetts and one daughter in Massachusetts, another sister and a sister in Massachusetts. So just lonely, man. Just a lonely, lonely guy.
died unexpectedly. 68. So he was all of, let me get the dog. He was 68 in 1979. He was 64, 63 when he bought that place in Merchants Bank. He wasn't on Social Security at that stage. 63. Then his wife dies a you know, year and a half later. His kids are in Massachusetts. His sister's in Massachusetts. Look, it's not that hard to get down there, but still, it's not the same thing. And he dies unexpectedly in 1979 at 68 years old. And the guy's obviously a wealthy guy. He bought the bank for 125000 bucks. He was president of a bank. And then he said, I'm not doing this anymore. And then unexpectedly. It's almost like it just well, it doesn't take too too much to put two and two together. I could have had a stroke. I get it. Could have had a heart attack. One hundred percent. But he was, you know, sixty-eight. I mean, this is one of the things when it comes to like social security and retirement decisions. Not that many of you going to live past that. Just not. So one more year, one more year, and then your wife dies, and then you're like, I mean, how much was he put? I, look, I don't know how much he was put. I'm not. I don't know this guy. I don't know anything about him. Just what I research. He's very active. How much time and energy was he put into his business building relative to just enjoying his life? And he might have enjoyed it. A lot of workaholics do. They enjoy it. If you're not a work, if you're a workaholic for some freaking crappy old job, then what the hell are you doing? Be a workaholic, something you enjoy. Man, don't be like that. I mean, look, and I, I'm not sitting here saying it's tragedy. I mean, he probably had a great life. I don't know. I'm just saying his, in a matter of, he was at the, pre, the, the freaking pinnacle of success in Northern Maine. A year and a half later, his wife dies. He retires from banking. He, he wasn't going to retire. He wasn't going to retire from banking when he just bought that building. The only reason he retires is because his wife dies. And then four years later, he's dead unexpectedly at the ripe young age of 68. It's too short. Life's too short. Tick, tick, tick. Make it happen. All right. Love to your thoughts. We'll see you.